Good day everybody, my name is Rens van Dalen and today I'm going to show you how to create this fun and easy photo manipulation in Affinity Photo. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can download the image folder in the description. To start off, we open a new document with a page width of 2000 pixels and a page height set to 2500 pixels. Now, open the image folder to copy and paste image number one into a project, which is the horse. Usually I'm terrible at naming layers, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's name this layer horse. A quick trick. To easily rescale and reposition a large image, just double tap the thumbnail on the image. This will make the image fit to the screen regardless of the size of our canvas. Now grab our move tool by pressing V on the keyboard and fit the image to the canvas. When done, press command 0 to fit the canvas back to the screen. Now it's time for our pen to join. Go back to the image folder and copy and paste image number 2 in our project. Name this layer Panda. With the move tool still selected, we can place the panda on the back of the horse. Our next step is to cut out the panda. We do so by using the selection brush tool by clicking here or by pressing the keyboard shortcut W. Zoom in on the panda by pressing command plus and brush over the panda to select it. Resize your brush using the bracket piece. Don't worry if you make a mistake. You can deselect parts of the selection by holding Alt and brushing over the unwanted part. Once you're happy with the selection, press the refine button. Affinity Photo will now try to refine and improve our selection. This usually works best for about anything on a distinct background. Brush over the parts where you want Affinity Photo to have a closer look at the panda selection. Once you're happy, press apply. So far our selection looks pretty nice already, however, I will show you that it's far from perfect yet. Remember, the more accurate our selection, the better the end result. But first, we cut out our current selection by pressing the mask icon. Now deselect a panda by pressing command D. So here's the trick, hold alt and click on the mask layer of the panda. Affinity Photo will now open the black and white mask full screen. Here is where you can see the flaws of our mask. Press B to select the brush tool. Pick a softer round brush, hardness to about 30% and paint with white over the parts that we want to show and with black over the parts that we want to hide. You can toggle between the foreground and background color by pressing X. Once you're happy, click on any other layer in the Layers panel to return to our project. The next thing we have to cover up is the piece of bamboo in front of Panda's right leg. Because, well, it looks weird. So, create a new layer by clicking here. And make sure it's above our Panda's layer. Name this layer Correction. Select the clone brush by either clicking here or pressing the shortcut S on the keyboard. 
Set the value in this drop down menu to current layer and below. We have to do this so we can sample pictures from our panda layer. Pick a sample, we hold Alt and click anywhere on the dark fur of the panda. You can see I've made a sample around here. Now we can brush over the bamboo stick to cover it up with fur. Our next step is to create some shadows underneath the panda to make things look more realistic. In this case, recreating the shadows is pretty easy since our image is lit with flat light, meaning there are no harsh shadows. To do so, we grab the brush tool by pressing B. Let's select the horse layer and click here to create a new pixel layer. Reselect the horse layer again and hold spacebar. Now click and drag downwards to the legs of the horse. Hold Alt and sample a dark shadow of the horse. Just ignore the assistant for now. Go back to our penna in the same way. Select the pixel layer. Select the soft brown brush and set the opacity to about 70%. Now paint in some contact shadows beneath the penna. Reduce the opacity to about 20% and paint in the rest of the shadows. You can resize the brush with the bracket key. Zoom out by pressing Command 0. Set the blend mode to darken and play with the opacity. Voila, we've created our panda shadow. As you can see here, our mask is not perfect yet. To correct this, we select the panda mask. Make sure our opacity is set to about 50%. Change our color back to black. And we brush over the areas that we want to correct. That looks a lot better. We're not done shadowing yet. Click on our correction layer, hold shift and click on our panda layer. Now press command G to group them together. We do this so that the adjustment layer that we're gonna add only affect this group. Name the group panda. Open the group by pressing this arrow icon. Select the correction layer, go down here to the adjustment layers and open an exposure adjustment layer. We set the value to about minus three and press OK. To be able to paint in the shadows, we have to invert the exposure adjustment layer mask by pressing command I. Select the brush tool with the soft brown brush with about 20% opacity. Now we can start painting in the shadows on the panda. Zoom in to get a closer look. Make sure your foreground color is set to white. Since the background looks rather empty, I decided to decorate it with a person with a beautiful hat. Go to the image folder and copy and paste image number 3 into a project. Reposition the image by using the move tool.
I use the exact same masking techniques as for the pen, so I'll speed up this process. <clears throat> Alright, now all we have left to do is to blend in our rice suit worker with the background. To do so, we select the layer of the person and click here to open the effects panel. Check Gaussian blur and set the radius to 4.5. Add a levels adjustment layer, clip it to our subject and brighten the shadows with about 15%. And that, beautiful people, is how I created this photo composition. There's many things we can do to finalize our image. Usually I first start by grouping everything together. Now we can either merge all visible layers on a new layer by pressing Command Alt Shift E and go to the developer persona to play around there. Or we do it manually by adding all different kinds of adjustment layer and live filters. What I prefer doing is to send it to my phone and do the final adjustments in Lightroom Mobile since it's free and easy to use. It's up to you. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment on what you would like to see next. If you enjoy my content, feel free to subscribe to my channel. It would mean the world to me. Then I hope I will see you in my next video.